you can get really creative with what you put on a reverb channel, you know, especially in electronic music. In big room EDM, uh, they tend to use really over the top reverbs as an effect to get the sounds just sounding enormous. And even though it's a little plucky sound, you can make it sound quite huge. You don't, you rarely um, get one effect that makes a whole sound insta, like there's no magic plug-in, you know. But quite often you'll just add like a little 5% here 5% there and all these things accumulate as long as you haven't overdone it to be a really big sound, you know. And uh, one way that I do that is I'll start to use a send effect. And first thing is I'll just load up a little reverb plugin I use called Valhalla. And I use it on the default setting. And if we have a listen to the plucky sound, I'll slowly turn up the send so you can hear the reverb working. and against the kick. Sounds pretty good and big, but I wanna get more of a pumping feeling out of it. So what I'll do is I'll load up one of Live's built-in effects, the glue compressor, and I'll drop that on the um, uh, send channel with the reverb. So it's sitting right after the reverb and then I'll click the little triangle on the compressor and uh, load up the sidechain settings. And we'll turn on the sidechain and we'll use the input for the sidechain. Um, we'll use the pluck sound itself. And uh, I'll solo the reverb channel. At the moment, uh, the sidechain is not working and I'll start to dial in the sidechain so you can hear it. And I'll turn the makeup a bit further up to compensate for the amount of compression. That's sounding good. Um, I'll turn the attack and the release quite to the lower settings actually, um, just so we have the compression working really quickly and we get more of a really noticeable pumping effect. And that sounds really good already. Um, and having a listen against the kick. So what that's doing is whenever the actual pluck plays, the reverb levels come down um, with compression. So what you're getting mainly is the tail of that reverb, you know, um, coming out in between the plucky note hits, you know. And that's what a lot of like the Dutch guys and stuff are using to try and get that big, you know, sound. Now I'm gonna do a couple of little things that I do myself, they're extra tricks to just really start to make that reverb have a bit more character and to be even wider than, um, uh, usually allows. So uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll load up an EQ8 right after that compressor and I'll turn it into mid side modes by clicking this little drop down and uh, hitting the M slash S button. And what that do does is it lets you toggle between the mid and the sides and whatever EQ you do will affect either the stuff that's happening um, in the center or the stuff that's happening out the sides. And what I'm going to do is just start to boost um, some of the sides in the higher frequencies just to make that the high frequencies stand out a bit more in the stereo field. And having a listen on its own, I'll just turn the EQ off. Um, another trick that I do is uh, I'll put some distortion and saturation on the reverb channel to bring out some of the subtleties of the reverb even more. Um, so if I use just Ableton's Overdrive, one of the things I like about it is um, it's got the tone control which lets you choose if you want the distortion to be a bit more of a woolly, muffly type distortion like the big old rock band type things or you can get a really gritty, sharp, modern distortion. And uh, I'll just solo the pluck and start to really just tune the tone of the sound a little bit. That's quite intense, I'll just turn the drive right down. And uh, you should be able to hear quite a noticeable effect there. So having a listen to everything together.
Now the reverb's doing everything I want. The tone of it's great, everything's great, except um, uh, it, uh, it's so big that I'm losing the kick a little bit. So I'm just gonna add one more compressor to the end and I'm gonna turn on the side chain and set that little short plucky um, kick drum that I have uh, as the input uh, for this. And we're gonna make it side chain to the kick. So not only is it being side chained to the uh, pluck itself, but there's a second amount of side chaining happening to the kick. And as you'll notice, you could hear the transient and the like the punch of the kick a lot more, you know. And I guess the whole point of this exercise has been that you can get something as simple as a reverb and really be creative with it to sculpt your sound. I apply this sort of stuff on guitar type sounds and things all the time, you know, on vocals or um, uh, recently I was like using the sound of a santur, which is like a Persian and Indian instrument, you know, and applying like crazy weird reverbs on there and stuff. And it just sounded really cool and different. It didn't sound like something out of a, like a cinematic landscape anymore and just sounded like a punchy sound, you know. Yeah, there's, there's no limits to anything, you know, so just be as creative and crazy and it's a lot easier to do something really crazy and silly and then pull it back than it is to make something that's boring sound exciting, you know, so yeah. <laughs>